Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing well and welcome to Popcorn Finance, the show where we discuss finance and about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. And if you're like me, you probably have more usernames and passwords than any human could possibly remember. So how do you keep your digital financial life safe? Uh, the other day I was sitting down listening to one of my favorite podcasts, the SMR podcast, and they were covering this exact topic about these password management tools that are out there. So I reached out to one of the hosts, Rob Dunwood. He's also the host of the Tech John, and he was kind enough to join me here today to talk about some password management tools. So Rob, welcome to the podcast. Hey man, it is so good to be on with you. Thanks for having me on. I've been using password management tools for years now, just because when I, last time I looked, I got like 500 plus passwords, which is way too many. That's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I couldn't, I don't even know where I would have written that down if I had a notebook or something containing all that stuff. And so I want to know, like, what exactly, for those who aren't familiar with what a password manager is, what exactly is a password manager and how do they work? So a password manager is essentially a piece of software that you're going to use across your web browsers and generally on your phone or your iPad or tablet. And what they do is instead of you having to remember username and passwords for every single site that requires one, the password manager or password vault will remember it for you. And not only will it remember it for you, it would actually create safe passwords for you because one of the things that happens one of the reasons why i strongly recommend password vaults is that people are creatures of habit you're going to get eight nine passwords that you can remember and you're going to just reuse them over and over and over again and you think oh well this one was truck 57 the next time i'll do truck 75 that doesn't work because computers are really, really fast at trying iterations of things you've already done. So to make a long story short, what password managers or passwords vaults will do is they will create extremely safe passwords for you. And in most cases, securely keep those passwords in your vault. I say in most cases, because one of the biggest names out there, LastPass, and that's probably the show you were listening to, they have had a major fault. Basically, they got hacked. It was as bad as it could possibly be. But here's the good thing about password managers. As bad as it was, the fact that literally hackers know people's usernames, maybe their actual names, their addresses, this and that and the other, they still don't know their passwords. Those are encrypted. Now, a lot of other information was gotten. That's problematic. But what password vaults tend to do is make it so that you are using passwords only one time per site or one time per you know thing that you would use it for. And they're extremely secure to where it literally would take tens of thousands of years of the most intense supercomputers on the planet to crack those passwords and to keep them safe. I wanted to, to kind of just touch on another point you mentioned there. You were saying that it creates these vaults that will create passwords for you that are complex enough to where it would take a computer a really long time to try to guess it. So what do you mean by that? Because, you know, what's the difference between someone has like a simple, you know, I don't know, Chris 2023 is my password versus some complex random thing this thing's can generate. How does that make you more safe? So Chris 2023 is something that you can read. So if a person can read it, a computer can read it, but you know what you couldn't read? Chris 2023 px comma semicolon hyphen dash a nine underscore b capital b s t s four nine x two nine you can't read that you can't pattern match against that so the chances that a computer is going to well your name is chris let me try that chris one chris two you know it can get to chris 2023 literally if it knows your name and it's going to try iterations of your name it gets to chris 2023 in 10, 12 seconds. And that is being generous. That is a real slow computer that would take it that long to iterate, you know, iterations of your name in simple numbers. But those other passwords are just more complex. So it's going to take more computing energy to try to figure out what those things are. There's just more variations. So you think about a keypad, if, you know, like there literally used to be keypads back in the day that only had like six numbers on them. Well, you can literally stand at that keypad and just try various combinations because, yeah, you might be there for an hour, but eventually you're going to try all of the combinations. But if there are all of the characters, uppercase and lowercase, and then all of the special characters that could potentially do this and they're in this randomized how those passwords are put together, it's going to take a computer significantly longer to ultimately brute force attack 
trying to figure out basically, let's try this password. Now let's try this variation of it. Now let's try that variation. It's just going to take it an enormous amount of time to come up with every variation based off of those complex passwords. For folks, if you've never used one, here's what they will do. You can be on your computer. You can be on your phone. You go to a website and the password vault actually pops up and says, click here and it'll enter your password, your username in for you. It does not require you to remember anything other than the master password for your password vault. So that's one password. You make it very secure that you use that you only have to type in when you want all your other passwords to come up. I recently changed companies with who I was using. I had 564 passwords that I had to convert over into another system, but it really didn't take that long because I didn't know what the passwords were in the first place. I used the old vault to tell me what the passwords were and just literally, you know, put those into the new vault that I'm using today. Do you feel secure enough with these password managers to put something like financial logins in there, like for your bank or investment accounts? Like, are they, I guess, proven enough to where someone could say, you know what, I want something unique for my financial accounts, my logins, but I know I can't remember them all. Can I go ahead and just throw them in one of these? Well, here's the nice thing about most password vaults that I would recommend and even some that I wouldn't recommend. They don't actually even know what the passwords are. You know, so even if in the case of LastPass, the company, they got hacked and the hackers literally got everything. They even got the backups of where the passwords are, but LastPass doesn't know what the passwords are. So they still have to go through the act of trying to hack brute force those passwords and figure them out. So to answer your question, I absolutely feel safe because these passwords, as we said earlier, they take literally, it would take, you know, tens of thousands of years in order to crack them. As compared to people can oftentimes when you're using a password that you've been using for a long time, they can almost social engineer you and get the password. They can just ask you enough questions to get to your password or ask you enough questions to get to like, if you ever had to go in and you know, what school did you graduate from? Where did you have your first kiss? All of that stuff. You will see all of these surveys on social media sites like Facebook to where they're just asking you those questions. And all that is, is a hacker that is legitimately asking questions, but they're putting all that information into a data database and then they're just going to brute force try to you know hack your account hack your password and get into your facebook account why do people do that because hackers think it's cool it wreaks havoc on people but it's just a cool thing to do to see if you can't figure out someone's password that way so i strongly 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 recommending password vaults because the key is that you don't know what your password is and no one else knows what your password is the only way that you know you're going to be susceptible to your password being hacked is if you give away the actual password to the password vault. So we want to use good practices, make sure that that password is a nice secure password that doesn't have your name in it. That doesn't have part of your social security number in it. Doesn't have all the things that password people are going to say, Hey, most people are going to do this. Most people are going to do, because really people are, you know, they're creatures of habit. They're not hard to figure out. You would be shocked at how easy it is to socially engineer someone into giving you a password that they created themselves. My mind is still tripping off the survey thing that like, they're just, <laughs> they're putting in questions that would be security questions. Like, Hey, you know, people just freely give this information out. I did not even think about that. So that's something else to really well, yeah. be on the lookout for. Yeah. All they're doing is using that. I don't want to say every single survey is doing this, but many of those surveys, those answers go into a big spreadsheet or into a big database. They just use to train brute force attacks on passwords. And that's how they figure out, you know, you hear people all the time, my password got hacked. It's like, no, somebody figured your password out. You didn't necessarily get hacked. They just figured it out. You know, it's hard to hack a good password. It's not hard to figure out when a human created one. <laughs> well, you know, I think a good thing to end this conversation on would be, do you have a recommendation? Like any, are there any services out there that you're like, you know what? These are some solid choices. If you're looking to try out your first password manager. So I've got my recommendations narrowed down to two. One of them is Bitwarden. The other one is one password. The reason I am actually still recommending that you take a look at Bitwarden is because I know for a lot of folks, a lot of my friends and family, they simply will not pay money mm. to do this yeah. because password managers generally aren't free. They have a, you know, two, three, four dollar a month of fee associated with them. Bitwarden does offer a free version that you can use on your phone. You can use on your tablet. You can use on your computer. 
and have a vault that's going to go across all of those devices. It doesn't do everything that the application can do, but it is pretty good for free. As far as the free ones that are out there, I'm not saying it's the best, but as far as the ones that I've actually played around with, it is really, really good. One password, if I give Bitwarden, if I give them like a nine and a half, I want to go ahead and give one password like the 9.8. But it is a paid app. I think it starts at like two ninety nine dollars per user. But then there's like a family plan for 5 or $6 a month. And you pay this at the beginning of the year and get to the end. But I always recommend a free and a paid because I just know some people, if I got to pay for it, it's not that important to me. And that's where the problem is. The password vault is just not in, that important to you until you get hacked. And I'm here to tell you, it is simply a matter of time. There's chances that you already have been and you just don't know it. Because you're using a password that you've been using for the last 20 years and you used it in a website 15 years ago. You don't even remember that you had an account there. That account got hacked. You didn't know about it. And unless you were using something like a password vault, because another feature that a lot of these password vaults will do is they will tell you when your passwords that you're using have been compromised so that you know that you can go and change those passwords, change those usernames. If you're keeping all that in your head, you'd never know. So I strongly, strongly recommend using a password vault because even from keeping you from getting hat for the sites that have been, they provide you another level of safety. And since that they tell you, Hey, this site had a problem, go change your passwords on that site. I hope this is a public service announcement to everyone out there who's using the same password <laughs> everywhere to, you know, maybe you want to rethink that. Maybe you want to try something else to make yourself a little more secure. Yeah, you mentioned SNMR Podcast, and one of the co-hosts of that show, he is a security expert. If you want to be safe, you need to make sure your passwords are protected from people like him, because what he does for a living is figure out how to get into stuff or figure out how to keep people from getting into it, which almost is the same thing. So there you go. There's people out there who would love to get your data. So make it at least a little bit harder for them to get in there. Rob, thanks again for the information and breaking that down and hopefully getting some people moving in the right direction when it comes to our online security. If you want to check out more of what you got going on, where should they go? Oh, you could definitely go head over to smrpodcast.com. That is a show. I believe we just put up episode 577. So I've been doing that podcast with two wow. knuckleheads for the last... Ah, wow. I don't I can't count. We started doing the show in 2008. So that's a long time ago. <laughs> long that time is a ago. very long time ago. Yeah. And to still be going that long and podcasting is impressive. And it's because it's a good show. It's one of my favorite shows always in my rotation. So do yourselves a favor. Go listen to it. Go subscribe. Check out Rob's great work along with his co-host. And I uh, appreciate you joining me again. Appreciate you having me on. It's a pleasure.